calcium-based geopolymer. Here we will see the tremendous difference between alkalination, alkali activation, and geopolymerization. And uh, I take uh, the example of the slag. Uh, alkali activated slag versus slag-based geopolymer cement. Uh, to start, one must know what we have in the slag. Uh, the slag is uh, made out of uh, a glassy substance that is uh, called the melilite, which is a solid solution of galenite. This is a silico aluminate of calcium and a carbonate magnesium silicate and of calcium too. And these two uh, minerals are subjected to alkalination and depolymerized. Under uh, the action of the alkali, the galenate is transformed into an orthosilate hydrate, a small molecule, and precipitation of aluminum. There is here one aluminum, and here the second, because here in the structure we had two for one SI. One AL, one AL, one SI, two AL, two one SI. A carbonate under the uh, alkali is depolymerized into a small molecule, in a desilicate, calcium desilaconate hydrate, that is the CSH of the cement chemistry, and precipitation of magnesium hydroxide. So, what is happening under alkalination? We have here, the two molecules that will interact and form a more complicated system, SI, 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 three SI with one AL, with the Q2 uh, units and the calcium, this is the CSH, some of the CSH remains and we have precipitation of aluminum hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. The problem. This is what we have. The aluminum is outside. The aluminum is outside of the structure. Not the aluminum, the, the potassium, the alkali. The aluminum is here, and the alkali is outside. Which means that this structure, if it stays as it is, is dangerous in terms of physical chemical properties. The potassium, the alkali, or the sodium will migrate very fast in contact with water. We will get a lot of leachates, we we'll get a lot of uh, bad properties. But this is the prop this is alkali activated slag. The presence of this free alkali is always here. This is not geopolymer. This is not geopolymer made out of slag, since geopolymerization must provide a stable material. It must provide a material that will uh, withstand all corrosions, because this is the chemistry that we have invented and that we are developing. So all people who are claiming that alkali activation of slag is similar to geopolymerization are totally wrong. And essentially in a lot of scientific papers that are dealing with the system, and because they are only doing this first step of geopolymerization, this is alkali activation, they end up with bad results in their studies. So we have to continue geopolymerization. This is not finished from alkali activation to geopolymer cement, we must add a networking element that will interact with this potassium aluminum that is free, and here nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, silicon, alkali activated slag, it is here. We have SIQ2, dangerous. We add 20 parts of metacarline, and we end up with SRQ3, that is a branched molecule that is still bigger and more stable, and we had 30 parts of metacarline and we end up with a SIQ4 stable system, three-dimensional 
networking. If we look at what is happening on the structures themselves, so we start here. This is slag alkaline alkaline activation. We add metacarline, we have a solid solution of two systems, calcium polysilate, SIL1, sodium polysilate disiloxo, SIL3, and they interpolycondense into a three-dimensional network. The problem, this guy provides higher strength. So all the people are just looking at the strength. You get uh, 90 MPa when you just uh, Alkali activate slags. I say, wow, wonderful. Uh, here, with a uh, genuine metacarline based uh, uh, geopolymer, you only get uh, 60. Bad. Well, in fact, we can also achieve 150 afterwards. But at the beginning, here, and this is why this claim that alkali activation is better in terms of strength, yes. In terms of long durability, no. You'll get all kinds of leachates. All the studies that are done and shows bad leachates and bad value for geopolymers are based on this chemical reaction. We come back later. I have a beautiful study uh, at the end of my keynote on that subject. So this is uh, the result of uh, so the difference between alkaline activation, and this is why I'm against the al alkaline activation, and also the terminology that is associated with it. This is banished from all our papers. And if by chance we uh, start uh, the Journal of Geopolymer Science, there will be no mention at all of alkaline activation. It will, they will be re rejected. So, you come to the main topic of my keynote, Geopolymer Cement and Concrete. University of Queensland Global Change Institute, Zero Energy and Carbon Neutral Workplace, the University of Queensland Global Change Institute, designed by Hassel in conjunction with Bleak, Tyners and Wagner's, is the world's first building to successfully use geopolymer concrete for structural purpose. What we have here, are the three floors made of precast geopolymer concrete. Uh, you have the floors, one, two, and three. And inside, on the ceilings of the floors, and inside they have their cooling pipes. So it is Brisbane, it is hot there, humid and hot, and their major concern is the cooling and not the heating. This is how it looks like now inside. Uh, the, uh, the slabs are not covered with any uh, paint, so they are naturally uh, beautiful white. And this is, uh, these are the slabs, 10 meter, 10.5 meters long, that are put in place. Three floors, 33 precast panels of slag, fly ash based geopolymer concrete. It has been made by the companies called Wagner's and they coined uh, their product earth friendly concrete. And first, their first beam that uh, they manufactured was used for testing. And this is uh, the beam that has been uh, tested for elastic deflection under the load, 10.5 meters long. And this is the result, no fatigue at all. They are using the geopolymer concrete uh, to make vaults for tunnels. Why? Because the geopolymer concrete or geopolymer cement has two very important properties. First, it is fire resistant, it does not explode like uh, Portland cement. It is a very important material in terms of fire resistant concrete. And second, because of the chemical uh, resistance, corrosion to any uh, salt and so forth. And especially in the Middle East, 
the fact that everything is corroding there is very important for them. And uh, since uh, it is uh, pretty, uh, it is used uh, as uh, for urban design. But uh, this, the uh, implementation is becoming bigger and bigger. They are now involved in the entire airport, regional airport in Brisbane, the second airport. Is practically finished. They have made with geopolymer concrete the entire buildings, uh, the uh, tarmac, and so forth. And uh, the inauguration will take place uh, this fall, 2014. You see them working on the uh, airport site. They have the concrete batch plant. Uh, the geopolymer concrete can be delivered by truck, pump or chute. They were using the chute system. Their uh, machinery equipment was not ready uh, for regular application as uh, Portland on the, uh, as on the ways. But this is how they made uh, their major uh, <coughs> pavement. So, I think that is evolving at a tremendous pace. Wagner's is using the slag, fly ash based geopolymer cement system, the one that we are recommending, the first category of the system. Slag, fly ash based geopolymer cement. It has been presented at various conferences in, the, uh, in Singapore, uh, in Australia, titled Engineering Properties of a Proprietary Premix Geopolymer Concrete by James M. Aldred, Technical Director of AECOM. This is a well-known multinational engineering service. Uh, and this one, what I took on, was presented at uh, the concrete conference uh, in uh, Australia at Gold Coast last year. This approach provides an objective basis to assess any concerns with using a non-traditional cement such as a geopolymer. So, a total quality, quantity pardon, of approximately 5 cubic 5,000 cubic meters geopolymer concrete, that is 12,000 tons, has been poured to date. This has been written in October 2013. It is certainly not lab crete. Much of the data presented in this paper is taken from the grade 40 geopolymer, that is 40 MPA, geopolymer production concrete, used in the precast floor panels for the Global Change Institute, the one that I showed you previously, the project at University of Queensland that has been cast from April to October 2012. So, let's see the properties. So, they have been comparing the properties of uh, EFC, geopolymer concrete, with Portland cement in the Australian standard. Compressive strength equivalent. Well, this is obvious that the compressive strength is equivalent in the compressive strength is strongly dependent on the aggregate, not on the binder. If you have a poor aggregate, uh, you get a poor strength. Even if your binder is super strong, this is the aggregate that is the, the weak point. On the opposite, flexural strength, 30% higher. We in the lab experienced up to 100% higher. Early age strength, good. Shrinkage, lower, average. So uh, these are results from production, regular production, not uh, from uh, just a small pilot in the lab. Acid resistance, this is one of the property of geopolymer cement, very high. Sulfate resistant, very high. They just arrived higher, but I it's for me very high, chloride resistant very high, 
heat of reaction very low and fire resistance very high. Uh, they started the development of geopolymer concrete because of the environmental issue, CO2 emission. And this is how they were involved in uh, the manufacture of these uh, floors, of these slabs, for the Global, Global Change Institute in Brisbane. And by doing uh, this, they uh, discovered that in fact the geopolymer concrete has so, such good properties that uh, what they are now witnessing is that uh, their sell and marketing arguments are, well, of course, environmental CO2 reduction, but more than this, uh, their uh, intrinsic, intrinsic uh, chemical resistant property with regard to Portland cement, because for them this is where the market is. This is where they want to really develop uh, their uh, production worldwide, essentially in the Middle East. So let's come back to the heat of reaction. We have here, uh, they made a comparison, uh, one cubic meter block of uh, a mixture of OPC and slang. This is uh, uh, a mix that uh, generates low heat generally and they compared it with the geopolymer concrete so you see the temperature rise and the time after seven hours the temperature re rose uh, to 15 degrees C and then declined and for the regular Portland it continued to raise to rise and to rise up to 35 degrees C for people, this is important, those who are involved in mass construction. But now, let's compare one testing that is always discussed in scientific papers, the carbonation test. The carbonation test, it means what happens when uh, the, uh, the concrete is exposed to the atmosphere uh, how fast uh, the CO2 will enter into the concrete, and it is measured in millimeter. Uh, you'll see here the difference between alkali activation, Portland cement, and geopolymer. We have the result for alkali activated slag, we have the result for slag based geopolymer cement compared with Portland. This is millimeters depths of carbonation. After seven days, we are like Portland. Same, these are a tenth of a millimeter, is nothing compared to alkali activation. This is alkali activated slag. Remember the structural element that I discussed previously with the alkali, potassium alkali that is outside of the structure that is capable of migration and this is the one that is carbonating and this is uh, something that is bad and a lot of subject of uh, study made on carbonation on so-called alkali activation geopolymers are presenting this bad data. This is wrong. These are the figures of slag based fly ash geopolymer concrete. The average 1.94, and we, of course, Portland clinker is the best, but now, today, is practically no longer uh, uh, used. They are always a mixture of Portland and uh, slag, so we compare uh, the uh, carbonation uh, for uh, geopolymer concrete and uh, regular Portland. It is the same, same magnitude, and uh, alkali activated slag concrete is the worst. So, the second material is the potassium, sodium potassium calcium ferrosilate based geopolymer cement. Uh, this is the one that is red in color. Uh, the slag fly ash base, when it is done properly with the raw materials, is white. And this one is red. This is something that is also interesting. Uh, this uh, raw material uh, is available uh, worldwide, so this is why I want to introduce it.
This is the end of my state of the geopolymer. Thank you very much.